living in this house is like living in a crack den. Your dog, your responsibility. Just blame me for everything. He really just goes nuts when we're not here. <laughs> Don't tell me. Tell my wife. Seven or eight times he went through the window. This is one of the worst cases I've ever seen. I don't want him jumping out the window. Oh. Oh. Look at this. He ate the friggin' shelf. Just blame me for everything. Your dog, your responsibility. My name is Laura. I live here with my 15-year-old son, Zach, my husband, Greg. <clears throat> I'm a mixed martial artist. I've taught for the last 15 years. I've trained hundreds of people to the level of black belt. <clears throat> Scooby! We got Scooby when he was about 15 weeks old from a kill shelter. Where's the good puppy? We were instantly in love, the entire family. Sweet, your goodness. I didn't bring the dog here. Didn't really want the dog. I'm not walking it. I'm not feeding it. I'm not doing anything that I don't want to do when I want to do it. Scooby is a sweetheart of a dog when people are home. He really just goes nuts when we're not here. He jumps through the windows and he smashes through them. He'd gotten something like 26 stitches across his head. You walk in the house after something like that, and it's like a grenade went off. We thought the bars would actually keep him from going through. The dog broke the window through the child safety bars. I feel like I'm living in a prison. All this is his. He just grabbed whatever he could and shook it into oblivion. Because of Scooby's episodes, living in this house is like living in a crack den. The blame goes to you because you made this dog happen. How did I make this dog happen? I didn't take this dog on to begin with. When my kids were younger, they wanted a dog. I didn't really want them to have a dog. And now I have a dog that needs taken care of, and nobody wants to take care of him. How is the dog all my responsibility? It makes me so angry that I can't get some help from my family with the dog situation. <coughs> this situation with Scrooby has really driven a wedge between Greg and I. In 10 minutes, I could get a list of $15,000 in dollars. And we live like this. We're a laughing stock of the neighborhood and the town as it is. He is just at his breaking point. If I move downstairs in the garage, I'll build myself a room. You wouldn't do that. Yeah, I would. I never want to have to pick between losing my dog or my dad. If we have to give him up, I couldn't live with myself. I would, I would be distraught. This is the last straw. If Victoria can't help us, then I'm, I'm gone. Come here, honey. Come here, honey. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hello. I'm good. Oh, look at you. You are magnificent. As soon as I walk into the house, I meet this beautiful dog. Hi, Laura. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Zach. Hey, nice to meet you, Zach. I'm Greg. Nice Good to, to meet, meet you. Good to meet you. And you are? This is Scooby. Hello. Oh, my. OK, I'm going to fall in love. <laughs> yes, hello. Why, why did you call me here? The biggest problem we have with him is when he's home by himself, he will tear the house to pieces, trying to get out to other dogs that are passing on the street. So this is him? Yep. This is him, the broken window. You can see where. Oh. Oh. Yep, watch your fingers. I won't do it. You do it. Oh. Yeah, what do you want to do? We're going to pull it down. No, yeah, that's this. all him. He went right through the window. Well, he right. actually went right through the window seven or eight times, but. Seven or eight? Wait a second. Seven or eight times yep. he went through the window? Scooby's a big dog. So he inflicts big, big damage. And this is a dog that has literally destroyed the house. He went through the window. Is that yeah, how he got his scar? That's how he got this. And that was about 24 stitches. And this was <gasps> another 20 stitches over here. Oh, my goodness. For a dog to injure himself so much and continue to do it, there is a desperation in this dog that goes far beyond normal. This is his favorite one doing here. This is his, oh, my. I've never seen anything like this ever. I know. Victoria was shocked by the damage that she had seen at our house. It certainly doesn't make me feel good. Good grief. This glass, I mean, my gosh. And the only time there's damage is when we're not open. How, how do you feel about all this destruction? I mean, what would... Can't what? have it. My wife feels he's a member of the family. I feel he's a member of the family, but he's a half member of the family. He's still a dog. 
Greg feels a little bit differently about Scooby than, than the rest of us do. Um, he's not a t as attached to the dog as we are. I think there are times when he could just take him or leave him. Whose responsibility is this dog now? Who blames who? Laura's. It's your responsibility. Laura's dog. I would have got rid of the dog a month later. We can't live like this, and we can't replace this on a weekly basis. If the training doesn't work, and Laura wants to just keep the dog around and run up the tab, then it's going to be on her, and I'm not going to stand by and watch it. This is, wow. So, oh my gosh. So you put this gate up here to stop him from going upstairs, obviously. Yeah, it's a whole different story going out a second story window than the first story. Well, I'm glad you've got this gate up here, then. Good. Right. <laughs> this is thousands and thousands of dollars worth of damage here. Don't tell me. Tell my wife. I think it's close to $15,000. There was tension between Greg and Laura. Scooby's behavior. It's literally destroying a relationship. Unbelievable. All right, any other damage? We can show you the garage. What happened door. in the garage? Well, after he did all this damage and got all the stitches, we had to kind of contain him because we have to go to work every day. And so we put him downstairs in the garage in a large uh, One large dog crate. crate. Oh, a crate yeah. for a dog like this? Ooh. He not only managed to get out of the crate through a hole about this large, but also after destroying a lot of the garage and chewing through wood shelving and everything else, chewed a hole in the garage door, big enough for him to get out. Oh. Yeah. He likes his freedom. He really does. Can I see the damage in the garage? Sure, sure absolutely. absolutely. Like this, this here? Yep, yep. Okay. right out that way. As you can see, this is the garage door that he ate a hole through. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. <gasps> oh, my god. When I went into the garage, I feel like I went into a crime scene. This is, this is panic. Mm -hmm. This is blind panic, not just like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to chew today. This is panic attack, mm -hmm. big time. It was very surprising that Victoria explained to us Scooby has panic attacks. We didn't really realize that that's what actually was happening. What have you done in the, what, six years this has this oh, been going okay. on? We've tried citronella collars. Didn't work. No. Yeah, don't say. No. Also tried the shock collars, oh. which was a horrible experience. Yeah. Seriously. Seriously. Your dog is anxious, stressed out, and you put a shock collar on him. We didn't realize that it was stress. We just thought it was a behavioral issue. So everything you're doing with the citronella collars and the shock collars and the telling him off and everything, you, um, you have made it worse. So we got to find a way to go, you know what, buddy? I understand you. I get it. I'm not happy that our attempts to help Scooby have hurt him or made the situation worse. But Laura, it's your dog. It's your job. Get it squared away. This happened two months ago. And why right. is it still like this? Because it's always my responsibility to clean up. And I'm, I'm why done I'm... with just taking care of everything myself. So you think you the most of the responsibility for everything is coming down on your shoulders? Victoria, it all falls to me. It all falls to me. I actually get blamed for it. They blame me. It's my fault. Laura's living with it. Greg has now just had enough. Their house is wrecked. And it's just awful to see it. A family really falling apart. Have you ever used a video camera or anything to actually film what he does when you're not here? Uh, not really, because yeah. the, the end result is pretty obvious. OK, because I want to see what happens when you leave. Mm -hmm. We can put some cameras up to actually see what he does. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of different reasons why right. a dog okay. will do destruction and damage like this. Okay. Before observing Scooby's behavior when his family left him, I wanted to make sure that he was safe. So I had them put plywood up on the window so that I knew that he couldn't jump out. What I want you to do now is I want you just to move him away from the door and go. And I want to see what he does. Come on. 
Be a good boy at home. Go lay down. Scooby, good boy at home. Go lay down. Okay. Good boy at home, Scoop. It's important that the environment is as normal as possible. That's why I had to go out of the house to film remotely to see Scooby's real natural reaction. Oh, I can hear him. I don't even have to see what's going on in here. I can hear him. There was no doubt in my mind. When everyone left, Scooby started to get riled up. See, urinating on the sofa? They're not gonna be very happy with that. Okay, now he's at the front window. There's no doubt in my mind that Scooby has anxiety when his people leave, but that's coupled with an incredible frustration and not being able to get out at people or dogs that he sees outside his home. I have no doubt in my mind that if that board wasn't up, or well, those bars went up, he would be through that window in a second. Just got upstairs. OK, well, hold on one second. I don't want him jumping out the window upstairs. Oh, God. He just got upstairs. OK, well, hold on one second. I don't want him jumping out the window upstairs. Come on, baby, come down here. Just got through the gate up here. How did he get? Come on, sweetheart. Oh, God, come on. Good boy, he's just torn the blinds down from outstairs. Good boy. I almost had a heart attack when I saw Scooby at the second floor window. He'd got the blinds down and he was trying to get out. Oh, God, destruction in here. Scooby's anxiety on separation is one of the worst cases I've ever seen. I just saw, when I was outside, I thought I saw him lift his leg on the couch. I couldn't, the camera angle, I couldn't exactly right. see it. Okay. Can we can we take a look and see if he oh, did? Oh, sure, and absolutely. Think... Right here? I feel I like... See it. Oh, yeah. Okay, did he? When dogs are so anxious, they express that anxiety through elimination. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So either they defecate or they urinate. Separation anxiety syndrome is a very, very tough behavior to modify. So I have a lot of challenges ahead of me. But I think my biggest challenge is getting the family to work together. This is the worst case of separation anxiety and destruction that I have ever, ever seen. And I've been training for a very, very long time. What really concerns me and what I need to be completely realistic with you and upfront about is that separation anxiety or distress is one of the most difficult behavior problems to modify. It requires commitment. Okay. And without it, we might as well just take him to the pound right now, rehome him right now, put him down. That was a very hard pill for me to swallow. I hate to think that a dog that I love and that has grown up with my children would have to be put down. You've got to meet in the middle. You have got to accept that this behavior is extremely serious. Okay. And that your home and your life is being wrecked by it. Mm -hmm. Laura, because you've been doing this all by yourself, right? So what do you need? I just need his help. What do you need from Laura? I need a little bit of like, yeah, I really screwed up and I shouldn't have done this because I would have been fine if Scooby never came into our life. I want the family to listen to each other, to understand what each other's going through, break those walls down and get on with it. Don't let the dog's problems tear you apart like it looks like it's doing at the moment. I asked for Victoria's help here as a premier dog trainer, uh, not as a marriage counselor. See, totally both sides. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I can understand why you're doing all the work. Well, you know, damn well you stand, come up to the plate and do some work, and your kids. Mm -hmm. But then you wanted the dog. He's absolutely right. But then again, you're not going to solve any problems by just saying you the one who's got to do it. That's not going to make the dog better gonna make it worse, and it has made it worse. Sure it has. Right here, right now, can you offer some kind of apology? 
I'm sorry. I was just trying to be a good mom. Help the kids along. I could see how difficult it was for Laura to own her mistakes. It's, it's easy to say you're sorry. Quite honestly, I need a lot more than that. I was amazed that Greg did not accept Laura's apology. That brick wall went right up. I'm going to do my utmost to help you. And I, obviously, I know that there are more deep-seated issues that you have to work out between yourselves. But what I wanted to get was to the, to the heart of it, that you both, A, understand mm -hmm. what you did or did not contribute to this, and that you have the commitment. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put in my 100% commitment. But as I said, when you work with separation anxiety, you never know how it's going to turn out. Scooby's distress on being alone is going to be a very, very hard to change. And I need all the family support. Let's do it now. Come on. <laughs> I wanted to bring you here because this kind of symbolizes what Scooby used to be like. And I want a fresh start. The garage, it's a symbol. It's part of Scooby's rehabilitation. It's part of the family's rehabilitation. I thought that we could clean this up. I made it very clear that I was turning over a new leaf, a new leaf going forward. This mess shouldn't even be here because those things shouldn't be in here. I didn't feel like I really wanted to uh, clean the garage at that point. I didn't think it was my job to clean the garage. Let's just get some of it done. The damage that Scooby has done in this house is the worst damage that I've ever seen any dog do in any house in all my years as a trainer. I thought that we could clean this up. This mess shouldn't even be here because those things shouldn't be in here. Just Let's just get some of it done. All right. right? And start the process. Great. OK? Ready? Something about the garage drives Greg crazy. It's more than just Scooby doing damage. Let's do it. Let's start. Clearing Let's go. It out. Team Hunko. Up and over. All the way up. All the way up. All trash right in there. Okay. The family worked well together cleaning up the garage, but there was tension. It happens in every family, doesn't it? All of the the crap gets in the way. Yep. Greg's resentment to the dog and the mess. It's going to take a lot from us as a family to reverse that. Nothing gets done. Everybody blames everybody else. You're not alone. We all do it. There was just too much damage, not enough effort on Laura's part in even caring about the damage or stopping the damage. I almost kind of stood on my haunches and said, uh-uh. But when, again, you're working together as a team for Scooby. That's going to help him. I'm um, to start. You know what, Greg? Get over it. You accepted this dog into your home, whether you wanted it or not. Be a man and take care of it. Don't just keep blaming everybody else for the dog's issues. Zach, you want to keep Scooby? Yes. Helping out is going to be part of Scooby's rehabilitation. Yes. I take an OK part in taking care of Scooby, but most of the time, my mom would take care of him. You could lose your dog. And I'm not just threatening you. This is a real possibility. Zach is just as guilty as Greg for leaving his mom to do everything with Scooby. If Scooby's going to be successful, every member of the family has to pitch in. Can you take yourselves off into the front room and just hang there? I just want to see what oh, he does. Oh, absolutely, sure. sure. OK. As I thought. OK. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah. Go out again, do exactly the same thing. I sure. want to see what he does again. OK, very interesting. This is a dog that does not want to be left alone, even when he's in the home. Scooby is hyper attached to his owners because whenever they move, he moves. When dogs are so attached to their owners, it doesn't matter even if other people in the home and owners leave. They can't cope. 
This is independence training, and independence training is a really important component when it comes to treating isolation, distress, separation anxiety that he has. And it's what you do when you are in the home that has a profound effect how, how he will react when you are out of the home. You're just teaching him how to cope by himself. Scooby has to learn to be away from the family. Laura's got to learn to be able to set boundaries, and Greg's got to establish a connection with his dog. So I certainly have my work cut out with this family. If you don't mind standing up over there. Separation from you is important. And I always think the stay is a really important cue that you can use with him. I use my finger as a guide. Sit, good, stay. Use the hand signal, like that. Mm -hmm. Turn your back on him, walk out, come back and only reward him when you're right next to him. Good. Okay, I want you to do this. I'm going to give you a little treat. A treat. Sit. Sit. Stay. Uh-oh. Now, the reason why it's harder with you, obviously, he is much more connected to you than he is to me, so this is going to be hard for him. Come, sit. Good boy. Stay. A lot of it is a lot tougher for Laura than it is for me. If she fails, that could lead to problems. When he demands behave, when he demands, like they start saying, mm -hmm. give me more food, turn your, turn your back to him. Turn, keep turning. Is he used to getting his way with you? He just raised his eyes to heaven, so yes. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. so. This is one of the things that I most needed Victoria for, was to say, you have spoiled this dog, and you cannot give in. You really need to, you need to back off. I was surprised by Victoria's comments that by coddling the dog, I was actually enabling his behavior. Uh, my husband, though, on the other hand, was certainly not surprised, that's for sure. Sit down. OK. What you ha what happens with these dogs is when they come up, to you, you go like exactly what Just you like did. This. Okay. Don't hold your hands out. Stand up. Turn your back to him. Sit down. Sit there, stand up. Laurie gives too much attention, too much affection to Scooby whenever he demands it of her, and that's not good for him. I don't want the hunkos to fail, and I know they want it to work, but this is no quick fix. Another part of this training that we're going to do to help with separation anxiety is sound therapy. Okay. We know that playing calming music to a dog can calm them down. Okay, I'm going to put this first one on. Let's get him in here too. Scooby. Here we go. I'm going to put this on here. Yeah. I want you to play 30 minutes worth of music while he's in this state, while you're stroking him, while you're hanging out. And I want to build up the positive association. And eventually, you're going to get to that point where you put this music on about five minutes before you leave. And then you leave. I worry most that Scooby may not be fixable and play the music for the dog and everything. Uh, that could get old very quickly. I have to say, I have a bit more faith in you following it than you following it. You sat back and done literally nothing except complain. I didn't do that either. <laughs> oh, you have bull. Come on, you did complain. You complained. Not anywhere near the complaints that were deserved. You didn't want this dog in here, but he's here now, and you have to help him. Yeah, no, I understand where you're coming from. There's this, this big wall that I you're going to be you, like. When I commit to something, I commit. I know, but I want you to Can commit I... with your heart as well as your head and as well as sitting here being. You know, I will commit. I don't. I don't get you. I don't sometimes, feel it. Sometimes a mental uh, commitment is far better than an emotional commitment. Greg says that he's a very loyal man. I just hope that he can transfer that loyalty onto Scooby. Coming up, he will not be able to cope. We have a huge issue, and a huge issue could turn into a catastrophic issue. I'm under no illusion. This is still a very difficult problem. There are a lot of dogs that suffer from separation anxiety, but 
there aren't a lot of dogs that will jump out of a glass window to get outside. Time is running out, and I need to tackle the most difficult issue, which is desensitizing Scooby to when his owners leave the house. I think you guys need to get on the same page. So long as being blamed, now you're actually going to work together. I want to desensitize him to any departure triggers. Picking up your keys, putting on your coat. As the dog watches your cues, the anxiety slowly builds. So instead of just picking up the keys and going, pick the keys up and you put them down again. Pick them up, put them down, pick it up, put them, put them down. And then you walk back into the room. And he's looking at you going, have you gone crazy? I'm going to be watching outside mm -hmm. your progress and go for it. I think that Greg has tremendous loyalty to myself and to our family. While I'm not so sure that he's keen on helping with the dog, I think he will help. Hi, puppy. He's looking a bit confused as if to say, what are they doing? It's not the most entertaining thing to do, to walk around the house for a half an hour. So I'll see you at the game. Drop your keys, pick up your bag, drop your bag, sit down, comfort the dog. Could be a little boring. I can see he's also lip licking. Lip licking is a real sign of stress. I didn't want the confusion to cause stress. I wanted him to relax with it, and he did. Take care. Call me during the day. OK, very good. Bye. Great. He is thoroughly confused. That's what I want. He's confused, but then he goes, huh. The next component of the training is going to be leaving. Everything we've done is culminating in this. I would like to work with you first, Greg, because I think he gets more stressed out with your departure because you're the last one to leave. I want the hunkos to practice going in and out of the door till Scooby is so bored that he goes and lies down. All right, let's go out. One second, one second, go in. Thanks, good. Totally unemotional, brilliant. Scooby really wasn't that bothered, Greg going in and out. That's exactly what I wanted Scooby to do. Greg got the hang of it, so I sent him away because the real test is gonna be with Laura. I don't want Laura to be feeding Scooby's anxiety all the time. He's got to be able to become independent. What I want you to do is just totally unemotionally get up, go. I can hear him. When Laura started to do the training, Scooby did really well. Graduated departures, starting from one second and building it up, is what we have to concentrate on now. Start off very, very quick and build it up slowly. It's fascinating to actually see him. Till it got to about 15 seconds. That was too long for him. They go back when he's whining. It was certainly a little worrisome that I wasn't able to leave Scooby for as long as we were hoping. Next time you go back in, can you put the music on and um, just sit with him for a little while? We have to wait till he stops whining. Right, get in now. He is such a needy dog. We made some tiny progress with Scooby, but it's clear that he still can't cope with being left alone. So now I'm going to have to step it up and take more drastic action. Laura got up to about 15, 16 seconds. There's a long road ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK. I hope Laura does realize that we have a huge issue, and that a, a huge issue could turn into a catastrophic issue. He will not be able to cope if he can see out these windows. So. I'm going to have to block these windows. And that would be a long-term yes, provision. Yes, it's really going to help. I'm under no illusion that this is still a very difficult problem. Greg is a martial artist. That's all about respect and honor. I want him to respect what Scooby is going through and help him through it. Hello. Hey, Hi. Victoria, how you doing? I'm all right, thank you. Good to see you. I wanted to come down and see you. I know martial arts is your passion, it's been it your is. life. It is. I want you to teach me a little bit. All right, very good. 
And good. Get right back out of there. Good. That's good. Now, this guy's coming in a little bit harder than he has. Okay. okay. Ready to block. And then everything you got. Nice loud kick. Good. Get that hand up there. Block that head. Better. Much better. Good. Okay. Basically, I'm just going to teach you a regular power front kick. The most important thing. You okay? She just walked out on me. I'm still not getting through to Greg. I want to see how passionate he is about the things that he loves and maybe get through, break down that wall and maybe broaden that passion, not just for the martial arts, but to his dog as well. Basically, I'm just going to teach you a regular power front kick. When I walked out on Greg, I don't think he okay. knew what to do. He was stunned. What's happened? But that's how I've been feeling as I've been talking to him. You OK? She just walked out on me. I'm putting my time and effort uh, into her. But she just turned her back and walked away like she doesn't care and she's not interested. What does it feel like when somebody just kind of glazes over? Uh-huh. Because that's how I felt that you kind of, you're into it with your head, but not with your heart. The metaphor is me doing the same thing with Scooby. It was a bit of an epiphany for me. What is the biggest fear of yours? My biggest fear is not doing well enough for my family. That's pretty much the same as me. I travel, I spend days, I spend weeks, I spend months away from the very person that I want to be with. And it's very hard for me. And my big fear is that something's going to happen when I'm away, because I'm not there to protect my family. Right. So I understand that. I also want you to understand what that fear is like when it's at its very worst. Because that's the kind of fear that Scooby experiences every day when someone leaves him. It's not just a fear, it's a terror. I know it's not going to change overnight, but I want you to even find a little part of yourself to find a tiny little bit of heart to help Scooby. As far as I'm concerned, you're the sensei in this case. You tell us what to do, and that's what's going to get done. OK. All right? Yep. Greg is a passionate guy, but I also hope I got through to him. You're only going to get out what you put in. All right, we put this to bed? Yes. All right. OK, we put it to bed. Good. We put it to bed. We move on. Enrichment toys mentally stimulate a dog. <laughs> And it's really great to use them because it helps a dog to be less bored in the home. I come bearing gifts. Excellent. Yes, Scooby, this is all for you. Talk about a spoiled dog. Dogs lead very boring lives in our homes, yet they still retain the amazing senses that they used to have to survive in the wild. So allow them to use those senses by giving them activity toys in the home so they can work out how to get their food rather than just having it in a boring old bowl. This one is great. Lots of dogs love these because you stuff it either end. Yum, yum, yum. And they have to eat to get it out. There you go. Oh, what a good boy. I want you to get up and walk out the room. I want to see what he does. Does he follow you or does he chew? OK. We'll find out. Let's see. What I love about this is that he heard her going because his ears went back. So he knows that he's out, she's out the room. But he's choosing to stay here with his bone, which is brilliant. It was great to be able to get up and leave the room and leave Scooby with Victoria and have him still interested in activity and not stressing. That was just super. I wanted to bring everything together now. This is the final part of the training. I put a temporary blackout on your windows because I don't want him seeing anything outside. You are not going to have to live like this forever. There are gr other great solutions that you can use that, are, that look nice, but I just want to see how it works. This is probably going to be one of the hardest things that we've ever had to do together as a team. I'm not really even sure what the future may hold, but we're about to find out. Laura, you're going to be in the home by yourself. I want you to do a few departure cues. Then I want you to go and get a favorite toy that I have pre-stuffed with delicious food. 
Wait a couple of minutes, hang out with him. Just get up and leave. Let's go. If this doesn't work and the training doesn't work and we're four months down the road and we're in the sim a similar boat as we are now, then we'll really be faced with some very hard decisions and I hope we don't get there. I wanted the crew to come out, film remotely so that we could get a really true picture of behavior. Good, she's doing the departure triggers. I was watching the monitor with my heart in my mouth. My stomach was leaping because I so wanted this to work. Nice. This is really good, Laura, I want you to leave. The goal is for Scooby to reach two minutes being by himself because that's the time when he's likely to be the most anxious. Now this, this is it. This is, what is he gonna do? Is he gonna leave that toy? for Scooby to reach two minutes being by himself because that's the time when he's likely to be the most anxious. Now this, this is it. This is, what is he gonna do? Is he gonna leave that toy? He doesn't even know I'm gone. Mm -mm. I wanna get past the two minute mark because that's when he started to freak. I am truthfully worried that it won't work and that there won't be a positive outcome. This is the longest two minutes of my life. <laughs> it's a little unsettling to try and take 10 seconds and turn it into two minutes quickly. Great, we're at two minutes, we're at two minutes. Two minutes later, he was very, very focused on the toys. It was a huge relief because that's what you picture your dog doing when you're not home. It was amazing. It was just absolutely an amazing transformation. Great. I think now we don't want to push it. Go back in, Laura. Hallelujah. We got to three minutes, and Scooby was relaxed. Three minutes might not seem a lot, but for this dog, it was huge. I would label that as a real success. The separation anxiety, the distress being isolated, the incredible frustration that Scooby feels is not going to go overnight. I'm under no illusion, and I know you're under no illusion, that this is a major, major problem. You've lived with it for so long. I think we'll take one step at a time, baby steps. That's going to be very hard. It will definitely be very hard to do. Every single thing we've worked on has shown like great promise, and it's shown great promise like that much where it could be stacked upon and stacked upon, built upon. This is going to be a process, you know, and it, just because we put, you know, a couple of days into this at this point doesn't mean that you're not going to have a relapse and it doesn't mean that something bad couldn't happen, you know, just because he's not there yet. If you do continue to work as a team, you will see huge improvements. If you don't, you won't. And that's it. I think that at times, that Scooby is going to fail. And I think that's going to irritate Greg. And I just hope that he can put his irritation and anger aside and keep with the program. All right, guys, see you. Thank see you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 There's no question the family's getting along better. You know, when you give a family a goal, you know, when you start all heading in the same direction towards that goal, they, a lot of the other stuff smooths out. All right, we really need to get going. Um, you want to take care of giving him his treat? Yeah, I'll get it squared away. OK, great. And my keys. I'm sort of wait for him to have his treat. It's definitely been hard not leaving the dog in the house. We've been doing the best that we can to keep him with us or keep someone home with him as often as possible. The few times that we've left Scooby has had a very happy return. We've had no damage at all whatsoever to the house since we've left. Though Scooby's improved, he's still not that comfortable with Laura and Greg leaving, so Laura and Greg have to make their comings and goings no big deal. Hey, Scoob. Wow, it's so nice to come That's home. Good and not have anything damaged, right? Yep. You're a good boy. I know that Greg and Laura are really delighted that the house hasn't been torn up, 
But I don't want there to be a setback. They have to be patient and take it slowly because if Scooby's anxious again, that just puts the training right back to square one. It's just been so nice to be able to be home and the house to be calm and personalities to be calm and the dog to be calm. We are definitely going to cover the windows permanently. We definitely need to do something that's a little more aesthetic for the neighborhood and for our own living purposes, but it seems to make all the difference. And it's been so nice for me to have you helping so much and have Zach helping so much. It's been really just a lifesaver, so thank you so much. You're welcome. And you know when I apologize that I meant it. Your apology is accepted. Keep up the good work. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site, Positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.